May I now request DG IIMC. The seminar has been divided into three sessions. The first being on the status of media and communication education in India. The second on the need for introducing new and advanced courses. And the third on a roadmap for a communication <laughs> university. I would like to welcome the Honorable Minister and to share his valuable insights on the subject matter. His sage and wise counsel in all matters is a source of inspiration for all of us. Sir, we are looking forward indeed to hearing your views in the context of this seminar. I am delighted to welcome Justice Mukul Mudgal, Chairman of the Broadcasting Content Complaints Council and former Chief Justice. It is also a pleasure to welcome Sri J.S. Mathur, Additional Secretary, and Sri Mihir Kumar Singh, Joint Secretary, the Heads of Media Units, as well as other Senior Officers of the Ministry. As per the latest reports of the media and entertainment sector, this whole sector is going to grow at the rate of about 14% CAGR, compounded annual growth rate, during the period 13 to 19. You are all aware that the communication sector continues to experience remarkable changes fueled by innovations in technology and service delivery. The ever-expanding digital world touches nearly all aspects of our modern lives. Some of the technological advancements that have impacted the communication sector are smartphones, 3G, 4G technologies, tablets, video on demand, and 3D technologies. Convergence between entertainment, information, telecommunication are clearly leading to an era in which the overall media and entertainment industry would further undergo a rapid change. What does a consumer want today? Consumer wants more flexibility in consumption of content, not only in terms of when he wants to see, but also where he wants to see and the devices on which he wants to see. The viewer is no longer satisfied with remaining a passive viewer and wants his thoughts and creativity to be shared with the world. In today's world, content is the king and better content at affordable prices will ensure that who survives in the market in the years to come. The access of online service would become vital for socio-economic existence. We are all aware about this. In these days of emerging convergence, the print media is rapidly embracing new technology, technology progressively utilizing e-services by launching e-versions of their print newspapers, magazines, and directories. The television industry is in the midst of technological and economic change. Audiences are becoming increasingly fragmented across regions and growing range of delivery platforms. As you will all agree that the social media has brought about a paradigm shift in the communication sector, and our Honorable Prime Minister has ensured that all ministries and departments of the government, and all ministers, all secretaries, are also, in some form or the other, are associated with the social media. <coughs> FM and community radios have been effective mediums for promoting grassroots democracy by airing local issues. In this fast-changing, constantly evolving and dynamic communication sector, there is an urgent need to have a close look at how we wish to equip the coming generations to meet these complex challenges. There will be an increasing need for professionals who can transcend the traditional boundaries between the media of print, broadcasting, audiovisual, and digital platforms. Media and communication education needs to address issues related to journalistic ethical conduct, within the context of a firm commitment to freedom of speech and expression. Another important aspect to be borne in mind is on the issue of content regulation within the framework of program and advertising codes. It is neither possible nor desirable for the governments to monitor and regulate the volume and diversity of content available today. We have so far believed that the best guarantee for ensuring that the media lives up to high ethical and professional standards is a strong system of voluntary self-regulation. Initiatives taken by News Broadcasters Standards Authority and Broadcasting Content Complaints Council and many such organizations have raised the level of trust and confidence in media. Media education should also address the ills impacting the ethics of <coughs> profession of journalism, such as yellow journalism, tendency to sensationalize, and also issues concerning paid news. The Ministry of INB, as you are aware, has established three centers of excellence. The Indian Institute of Mass Communication, basically which looks and focuses on print, radio and TV journalism, advertising and public relations, and development communication, while the Film and Television Institute of India at Pune and uh, Kolkata 
They focus on various aspects of film and TV, such as direction, production, editing, script writing, audiography, cinematography, etc. But these institutions are not empowered to grant degrees at the moment. The prime objective, ladies and gentlemen of this seminar, is to consult all the stakeholders for their views on the pos possibility of establishing such an overarching communication university in the country. Your contributions are extremely valuable to us to take this process forward. Given the large number and diversity of state stakeholders across the country, we may need to hope, hold further discussions on the subject if necessary. I would like to thank all our distinguished participants for having kindly agreed to spare their valuable time. Secretary of the Department of INB, Shri Mathur, the additional secretary, Shri Singh, the joint secretary, Sumit Tandon, and friends. I, of course, in the last few months, uh, with my additional responsibility, have had uh, several occasions to speak on this subject. So some of my views uh, may be repetitive for those who have heard me speak on this subject earlier. The media unquestionably has a very important and a powerful role to play. The role is somewhat evolving. Instead of being an informant, the situation seems to have changed where uh, it's also partly becoming a participant who lays down the agenda. Now, this is a changed role. Whether it's good or bad, uh, I don't think I'm in a position to make a judgment on this. And there are several reasons I analyze for this. The first reason I believed in the last one decade, the definition of the word news has changed. News is today what camera can capture. What camera can't capture is virtually redundant. And that is why a policeman throwing a stone, as Justice Mudgal mentioned, is something which a camera can capture. And therefore, that instantaneously becomes a news. And if we look at conventional media also, the policeman throwing a stone or some singer having made an outlandish tweet found greater billing on Indian media than the results of the British election. So the balance seems to have been uh, somewhat offset because these were events which took place on the same day and the priorities therefore keep changing. Now, the impact of the camera was first met, felt in the print media. And the print media was slightly lost as to what to do in a situation where people for the last 24 hours have been watching the news on television. And therefore, can you report the same news in next day's newspaper? So the print media also got busy reinventing itself. And most uh, stories, instead of being informative, was to analyze what is behind the news. So that's a gradual shift in the print media which has taken place. And now, of course, uh, we are in the initial years of the digital media, which is going to be faster, more instantaneous. Between electronic media and digital media, they've uh, already moved towards the decline, if not death, of magazine journalism, of tabloid journalism, because they are filling up the gap uh, uh, or the void which is uh, uh, necessarily going to be created thereof. And these are what uh, the Secretary just now mentioned, the impact of technology itself. I think the second important impact for this is 
and that's a real challenge, the absence of uh, an adequate financial model. What is the financial model behind the digital media? It's still struggling to find one. Between uh, electronic media, the obvious aberration in the electronic media is that the cost of distribution is more than the cost of content. And therefore, cost of distribution being so high, there is an obvious compromise on the cost of content because uh, the width of the advertising and the quantum of advertising available uh, is almost static or maybe growing marginally. And therefore, this cost of content being compromised with leads again to two important challenges. One is in the battle of eyeballs. You now have to compete. And if you are to compete, depending on what's the priority of a channel, the desire to be watched more is based on the desire to create the hype. And hype can get created... Uh, by controversies, it can get created by celebrities, it can get created by campaigns, it can get created by important crime events being highlighted, it can get created from cinema to cricket, and therefore these are all areas where uh, Controversies help to create uh, that necessary hype which helps you in the eyeballs. And this necessarily leads to shrillness. Now in a shrill debate, the other side of the picture is normally not known. And if the epidemic of shrillness spreads, then channel across channel you will find only one viewpoint. Now, if there is an alternative, legitimate alternative viewpoint, how do you fill in the gap for that? For instance, there are a number of public issues currently being debated where I am choosing not to express myself because I find I am not adequately informed because I only know one side of the picture. Because I have only watched shrill campaigns and it's only when the shrillness uh, dilutes a little that I'll probably have a space for another viewpoint being expressed. The second important challenge in the absence of a financial model is that whereas some who have, uh, and I'm sure a very large number of them do have this, a proper adequate ethical base, or priorities will maintain that ethics. The others will start compromising with it. And that is how the whole institution of paid news really has been, uh, has, has emerged. And in a paid news scenario, particularly during elections and so on, Uh, it seemed to be highly prevalent. Now, is there a way we can check it? Is there a way our Broadcasting uh, uh, Complaints Council can uh, check it? Uh, 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 I have uh, my very serious doubts. I always wondered on a sidelight, Justice Mudgal is here, so I'll take the benefit of his presence. Originally, the concept of news was that news is a part of, uh, an integral part of free speech, which is constitutionally protected. A decade and a half ago, 
the supreme court in a judgment which i thought uh, it followed the american uh, precedent and ignored earlier indian precedents decided that commercial speech is also free speech so those who market paid news might find this uh, interpretation uh, of the supreme court coming to their aid uh, if the broadcasting uh, complaints council uh, were to uh, uh, proceed against uh, paid news because that is commercial speech or commercial free speech they said it in the context of advertising but uh, it's obviously uh, the yellow pages case it obviously extends to this principle and therefore these are going to be the challenges but at the end of the day the secretary mentioned that the content is the king i think uh, 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 the viewer or the reader is the king and therefore he has an option today he is groping in the dark he has a remote in his hand he has his uh, smartphone is in hand and he is trying to dissect uh, various versions of news uh, to find out which is the closest to reality and therefore uh, once he decides that this is the channel or this is the site or this is the newspaper where i get uh, uh, more objectivity uh, uh, it is only then that he uh, starts uh, believing and relying on that and i think uh, that struggle to find out uh, uh, unadulterated news as distinct from uh, campaign news or as distinct from uh, a viewpoint which is expressed uh, 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 that struggle is still on at the end of the day i think uh, uh, in this entire width of the media having expanded it's a good sign there's nothing wrong in it uh, there may be an opportunity for the conventionalists to hit back because uh, that reader or viewer who's the king and who's today struggling to find out uh, at least factually what are the uh, uh, what are the correct versions or what are the different events taking place in the world and what is a possible uh, interpretation of that once he realizes that uh, that is available on a particular source then his preference for that source uh, is bound to increase and i have not the least doubt uh, that the space for that conventional news is again going to emerge uh, rather than uh, what i always refer to as anchor driven news or uh, uh, an event which uh, uh, entirely rotates around one or two news events uh, 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 that space is going to be there but at the end of the day i think the great thing about uh, our media world is that we enjoy it i personally enjoy it there may be different versions there may be different extremes uh, uh, you have uh, the same uh, 20 paise people on 20 different channels uh, uh, pontificating their views every evening uh, so there is a space for us to turn over and find out if there is a new face saying something different from the conventional ones each evening and uh, uh, you can also resort to some serious reading which is now also available particularly on the net it is available on the newspapers it is available and uh, i have in a daily schedule also found that the mornings are a little more restrained and sober uh, it's only towards the evening uh, that the mood slightly heats up uh, and uh, the campaigns begin to build up but overall there is a there is a space for everyone to watch now what does the university do i'm glad uh, the indian institute of mass communication has organized this uh, discussion that you need a university i think you do because the universe of media is so large that you will need trained people getting into it you will need people trained in various forms of reporting in various languages the width is going to increase our population is very large our uh, uh, viewership is very large uh, our target audiences could be different they could be the uh, indians living outside india they could be 
people of different regional groups, they could be people in the farm sector and various groups, and therefore you need to train people for this. But then uh, the best training from the journalist uh, always comes when he's on his feet. And therefore when he's on his feet, uh, either he remains stuck, grounded completely, and sticks to his kind of reporting and comments, or he gets swayed with the wind that some people are overtaking him, therefore he has to outbeat them. And that's a training I'm sure no university can probably provide to him. Uh, that's a training which he's going to get while he's on his feet uh, actually reporting events. Uh, I'm quite sure that the discussion today will uh, bring various facets of the media world uh, uh, into focus. And uh, probably the need for more structured training before you enter the field will also be discussed. I wish your seminar today a great success.